which was, <laughs> as you can imagine, a bit of a problem for a lot of them. But for some of them, it was really dope. <laughs> so I am going to attempt to do that here. Uh, no promises. I'm basically going to use the patches that I normally use to test all our products and, and work problems out. Uh, so we'll see how it goes. So I'm just going to jam for like 10 minutes, and then we'll get on with it. Theoretically. Yeah. Now, remember that Playboy's or Playgirl, Playgirl's sexiest rocker of 1996 is an, I that. is an honorary. It's an honorary thing. It doesn't mean that I'm actually a rocker.
so what I did there was. <laughs> All right, so the first thing I want to talk about is our new baby. And so you probably saw me hitting it a couple times here. Let me try to get a camera. Out of the way. Uh, when I changed from the first kind of trackish thing to the second trackish thing, I was. Uh, uh, I recorded a quick four bar loop of this, of what was going on, and then I changed all the sequences and everything, and the drum patterns and all of that, and then I cross-faded it to the, uh, to the live signal once I had what I was having. With the Dead Man Mixer, you can actually listen on the Q mix and see what you want. Um, and then, as obviously, it's got, we're, uh, we're still working on, we're still working on, uh, the UI in general, but, but, uh, so it's got a, uh, it's a 50 second buffer at one time, at four times that's 12.5 seconds, and at half time, where you lose some fidelity, it, I mean, it just goes up. You can see the time. So I'm just going to record it quick. I have a one measure, cl uh, one, right on the one, I have a, a trigger coming out of the sequencer every measure. So it's, uh, it's getting the trigger, that's the blue light. And then it, uh, That's the actual, that's the mix, that's the live. I changed the volume a little bit, so. Now it's looping. loop. That's the live input. And then, so we're, we're still working on the uh, software for this. So it's got, a, it's got a little ways to go. That was the, that's the main. And uh, the way I wanted to do it was the one thing everybody hates, myself included, is uh, dumpster diving for menus, especially in Euro. Like you, you hate it on a normal synth. Never mind this shit. So, <laughs> so, uh, I tried to give it all, uh, like the knobs here, they're pots, and they're going to be common to most of, the, most of the modes that it has. But I tried to do it all so you could control the major function that you would need in any mode just with this one knob. You can also get to any other mode from the one knob. You can get to your, whoops, hard to do looking back at it. You can get to the, if you want to load a sample, um, <laughs> I was actually going to demonstrate a really dope sample loading thing, but my business partner broke it. So, <laughs> so uh, we won't be doing that. But uh, so, so if you're in the clock looper and you're in the middle of your set, you don't want to be dicking around with, lo with looking for all kinds of menus and whatnot. You just want to hold the button down, go to the sample you want, hold it down again, and it's done. It's in there, ready to go. It's in sync, assuming that you have some kind of planning paradigm and your tempo is the same as your loop is at. Uh, and then the, uh, you'll have five modes in all. There's the uh, clock looper, which is what I was using. The tape looper, which will work exactly like you think it will. Uh, basically kind of frippertronics. You set the tape loop, the length of the loop, and then uh, and then you can either add to it or let it go, overdub it, mix with it, whatever. And then a uh, sample player, which uh, we haven't written yet, but it's, it's there. And that'll be exactly the basic sample player. A replicant, which will be a more or less complete clone of our replicant plugin. For those of you that use that, you know that it's, it's a doper kind of thing. Um, and then the last mode is glitch mode, which will be uh, stutter shuffle and, and reverse, kind of like the in the uh, 
in Glitch 2 plugin. Yeah, it's a sim similar to that. It, these are actually taken from our automaton plugin, but uh, modified for context. So that's the, uh, th this actually is one of two that exist right now. Uh, it'll have a cycle out, so you'll be able to sync from it if you make a loop in tape loop mode, and you want, uh, and you'll be able to set your divisions for that, so you can have it send out timing from that loop, uh, or it'll basically pass through whatever your clock signal is. Each of these three buttons do appropriate things for the uh, when it is in when the feedback knob is all the way up. When you overdub, it will include the original signal, or include your loop signal. Actually, probably easier to show that. You get a one measure loop here. Whoops, stop that. Or a three measure loop. All right, so, so that's my loop there. Now you see play record, it switched to play overdub. So if I bring, out, bring up a different sound. So right now the drums you're hearing are the loop. The synth is coming off the sequencer. So I'm going to overdub a little tiny chunk of that. So now we have the recorded loop. So that was with the feedback all the way up. Now with the feedback all the way down, it replaces. You can do that backwards too. Do a different pitch. Real low. You get the idea. It's a looper, you know. <laughs> I don't know what else to tell you about that. Uh, <laughs> so basically, the kick drum was Boom Shack, our big analog drum voice. The snare drum was Neuron, which is our digital FM drum voice. The hi-hat was a module which I will probably never sell, uh, which I call Hatbox. And it's basically our old Mad Hatter module, but with an envelope. And uh, it would be $289, which is a lot for a hi-hat, Spe especially one that just sounds like a 606. So I'd rather you save that money and put it into one of these. Uh, the melody in the first couple tracks and the, and the uh, bass in the last one was, was our Proton module, which is our Car Plus Strong. Uh, one thing that we've done with Proton that, the one thing I hate, I hate about Car Plus Strong is it has no bottom, which makes it suck for electronic music. Everyone's always talking, does it do Car Plus? You got this delay, can you Car Plus with it? And you don't even, yeah. So we made a Car Plus Strong module, and <laughs> because Car Plus has no bottom, we added uh, a sine wave. So the, uh, the normal little noise burst that you use to excite it. That little guy. That's without. This is normal car plus without the bottom. And then. These speakers don't have a ton of bottom, but you get the idea. Uh, this is also a delay, because it's, because it's a delay. Uh, it has an input right there. 
And then uh, all our usual effects I used to uh, affect things. What else did I want to talk about? Oh, EOS. That's actually why I'm here. I knew there was a fucking reason I drove all this way. <laughs> I'm terrible. I'm like I'm terrible at this shit. I'm my brain is a bag of cats. I'm not like Paul with the PowerPoint and the. I'm, you know, like in Office Space where they're like, where they're like, what do you do exactly? I'm like, I'm a goddamn people person. That's me. Any event. So that's Proton. EOS. Get a better view in here for this guy. Uh, if you are familiar with our plugins, you're familiar with EOS. It is uh, created for us under contract by Sean Costello of Valhalla DSP. Uh, it was actually his first big reverb. Uh, after the success of this, because we didn't like we're we're not the kind of company where we're going to hide the contract work. I mean, he did the work, you know. <laughs> so, so. Uh, he actually got enough notoriety out of that to start his own plug-in company. I might be blowing my own horn on that a little bit. But, but it's Sean, so you can make fun of him. And uh, this is our best-selling plug-in, or our second best, depending on how you count. And uh, after four years of trying, we finally managed to shoehorn it in a module. This is code identical to the plug-in. It is, uh, it's literally copied and pasted. The only thing we did was change all the dynamic RAM allocation to static to deal with a, the embedded environment. So, with that said, we weren't, like I didn't put every control on the plugin in the module because a lot of it you never fucking touch, ever. Like, I, I, I don't know, I've, I never touch it. Maybe some people do, I don't know. Uh, so instead of having six controls for the EQ, I just gave it one, which is color. Uh, it, it just seemed easier. So it goes from dark, dark and long, to bright and long. And it, uh, one thing about EOS that with the what we had him create it, we, I wanted uh, a reverb that was similar to the, and this is actually how Shimmer came out too, I wanted a reverb that was similar to the Harold Budd stuff on, you know, the Harold Budd Eno stuff. Uh, at the time that we had this created, there really wasn't a way to do that in software. There was no software reverb that went as long as that stuff did. So uh, uh, I asked Sean if he would do it, and he's like, well, give it a whirl, and he did it. Uh, so, so that's it, the medium setting. They're short. And here's all the way up. go on for a while. And it's got freeze. Now, I actually, we haven't, we're shipping it next week. Uh, it's going to the beta testers on Friday, and hopefully we'll be shipping on Monday or Tuesday, because I need some money to go to Super Bowl. Um, but, uh, uh, the infinite button, there's, a, there's two schools of thought about the infinite button, whether it should be, whether it should continue to, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Stack, whatever. Like if the input will still be live when, uh, it, when the infinite is, is on. Um, I personally, I like it to stack. Now you have to, you have to have some common sense there because if you keep doing it, it's going to start pegging and clipping and not sound like a reverb and, and so much as it'll sound like a big muff pie. Um, as I could change it to where it will shut, will, where it'll mute the inputs when the infinite is on. So basically, if everyone that buys it complains, then I'll change it. <laughs> but right now, I'm leaving it. But I'm, leaving, I'm leaving it the way I like for now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the the button has two states. Like it, uh, if the lock is on, then it's latching. 
and if the lock is off, then it's momentary. And this right here is, uh, if it's in momentary, <laughs> then it's a gate, and if it's in locked, then it's a uh, trigger. We'll turn that on and off. So you can put that in your sequencing shit or whatever. Um, it, has <laughs> it hasn't gone to the beta testers yet. <laughs> it's actually kind of cool. Uh, EOS is an unstable algorithm, so there's a reason I didn't give that button a trigger. Although, in retrospect, I kind of should have. Um, so it has, uh, there's three algorithms in the original EOS plugin. There's uh, superhull, monoplate, and stereoplate. Uh, superhull was no problem. It, ironically, it's the biggest of the three algorithms, but it works fine just by the nature of how these, these MCUs work. Uh, the monoplate worked fine. The stereo plate did not work. I could, I, for love or money, I could not get that thing to work on this. So what I did was I turned the monoplate that I already had into a stereo plate. So basically you have the super hall algorithm from EOS that everyone likes, and then you have a pair of monoplates that have a common input. So uh, it doesn't really sound that different, truthfully. That's the, that's the, that's the plates, and then here's super. The, the main difference is in the uh, pre-delay stuff. Let me turn down all the diffusion and all that. Oops. So that's the, so that's the plate early reflections, and then the super hall early reflections are quite a bit different. Like, you can't tell on these. In the headphones, it's really obvious. <laughs> yeah. you, can, you can hear the, you can hear the, the reflections in uh, the Super Hall kind of and There we go. And then in the plate, it's just kind of a Please stop doing that. Um, let's see, what else do I have? That's a, uh, this little shit down in the corner here, this was uh, the base in most of that. We're actually going to do a desktop synth, which uh, is called Sinistar. I had hoped to have one. I do not, uh, because this took way longer than we thought it would, as that's just the nature of shit. Um, what I do have is the oscillator which is digital. It's a three-mode oscillator. It has, I call the SEM mode, actually from Eric's SEM. It's got single cycle samples. Uh, that, so it's basically a pair of SEM oscillators. And then it's got a two-op FM mode, and then a, what I call a game mode, which is a whole raft of like NES, Atari 2600, all that shit. Uh, oscillators on the left side and on the right side is a digital uh, pitch noise. So. And then it has an analog filter, it's multi-mode, self-resonant in all three modes. And then it has, uh, on the output section, it can be a LPG fast, LPG slow, or VCA. So uh, uh, the left side, it'll be, it's basically like, I don't want to say I stone ripped Tony off, but it's like no coast. It's the same kind of format, same input section more or less. So he did it right, I can't, can't deny it. So. I mean, look at all those. They're all identical, basically. So <laughs> I, don't, I don't feel that bad about it, but let me just throw that out there that I did it with malice. Like, uh, I'm gonna, that's a good idea. I'm going to do that. <laughs> no Coast is great. You can't deny it. So I, I, wanted, I wanted a digital one that could do drum sounds and, and, and wacky, non-West Coast shit. So uh, the envelopes or the modulation section in that will be too... I'm using uh, two mini slews to, to <coughs> emulate it, basically. But it will basically be two ADR that can be, uh, can be ADR, ASR, or looping. It's like a normal West Coast kind of shit. Whatever. Uh, what else do I have? That's it, really. Sure. Sequencer one, effects. I will happily take all kinds of questions. Yeah.
man. Stop clapping. That was quick, man. I, I seriously talked for almost three hours on Monday. So, like, this 30 minute shit is awesome. <laughs> Questions? Yeah. Were, were you saying those are going to be dedicated modules or those are going to be in the That will, well, I made them, I made this in, because I have to do the code before I actually have the unit. That's just the way we work. <laughs> so, like, the, and so I just got, I just got this, uh, like, last Wednesday, I guess. I, you guys saw it on Instagram, I'm sure. Um, but uh, normally we work on one of our development platforms for a long time before we actually <coughs> button down to do the hardware because you can't really get that wrong. Uh, so with the case of Sinistar, I'm actually using what I'd originally wanted to do, the acid horse that I, you may have heard me talk about. It was like a little, just, this was actually going to be a full voice. And we ended up using it as oscillator for Sinistar. So this, the filter is actually the filter from Boom Shack. Uh, the, I'm using a an A-verb to be the output section, <laughs> you know. They're all the same inside, so it's like, this whole, every every module right here is identical, essentially. What? Yeah. yeah. So, it's next. Uh, AOS is coming out next week, and so in about a month and a half, two months, then it'll be after that. Yeah, it's basically I took the I took the monoplate and, and looked at how he did the stereo one and did the same. So it's actually stereo. It's a, yeah, it's a, it's a good movie. I'm very happy. Do you have an ETA in that guy? Two months. I would say a lot quicker, but he's having all kinds of trouble with SD card. Oh, it'll be, in, and so it's actually this glitch mode here. It won't have the live, but it has the effects which you can trigger. That's three of them. I didn't put the frequency shifter in there because why? Gary Chang. Yes. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Good to see you. The, the reverb mod will start. It ships next week. Yeah. Uh, the control will get the first ones. What's it called? Aos. Aos. Yeah. Goddess of the Dawn. You know, I don't you say, know. man, it's like, I'm just a big, I'm I a know big you're, uh, I know you're fan. a reader guy. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, what's it going to cost? Um, four ninety. Same as, same as Urban Book. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah we, we're only getting 30 next week, so they're all going to control. Okay. Uh, no so yeah, <laughs> so Sean will get them when I get back from Super Bowl, and yeah. they'll get them about the same time. Okay. I can get them from Control. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So awesome, man. I love those guys. Yeah. <laughs> Very interesting. Like <laughs> what you decided on uh, interface wise. Yeah. Well, that's the that's the thing. Like I was looking all the other loops. Like I need the I need the visual. Yes. I, like I'm a I'm a visual. I'm a graphic designer. You know. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> I need the visual, so so I had to. Yeah, very cool. No, it just so you then know, you can see the hits in there. You know, it, it's nice because it's like uh, we used to like put a little mark on uh, on the tape yeah, on yeah. the echo flex. Yeah, so you exactly. Could see so you can see the loop. <laughs> yeah. I use like I, I I do a ton of tape looping at home. I got a, a MTR12. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, <laughs> and I like write the like I'd record a drum loop and then I'd put marks for the for all the kick drums so I could see them. You know, like that awesome. kind of shit. Yeah, yeah. So this yeah this will be similar. Kind of. Very but cool. I I didn't want to do any menu guys. So I just like one knob. And I can see it from here. You can switch modes while it's playing. So I got That's it. great. So that's the tape loop mode. You can see. Yeah, I really want to be able to see the splice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's it's a uh, RAM based. Yeah. So uh, but it's got an SD card. So or you storing can, loop. You can save the loop if you if you want. Uh, okay. So that. You know what the size of the loops are? Uh, it's 50 seconds. 
At 48K, 24 minutes. 50 second stereo. Okay. Um, 50K, 24 minutes. Uh, 48K. 48K. 48. Okay. I'm still in Sinclair land. I got my Sinclair reverb recently. Oh, really? Yeah, it's unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, you have you have all the sampling cards, or is it just that? Thirty-two voice uh, sampler. It's just ridiculous. It sounds like it sounds live. Those things are great. We had, it's funny because we were when I was doing my third, I guess my third record, we had done everything on on uh, on Emacs, Emacs Two, and whatnot. And uh, this guy named uh, Frankie Fairlight, he lived in Chicago, and he had the Ministry of Fairlight. He oh, owned, yeah. he, he's oh, the yeah. one that owned it. <laughs> and he brought it to the studio, and he's like, Man, you can hear what real sampling's like. And I'm like, it's like eight seconds. I can't do anything with that. But right. like once, like just like, cause I think it's because of all the, all the shenanigans they had to do to keep it from aliasing and whatnot. Like it just, like all this grave filtering and shit. Just, like it's so thick. And, and a, like a very different vibe than, than just using an Emax or whatever, you know? No, absolutely. And, if, and the Sinclair is the same way. Well, the, the Sinclair really had, it sounds live. Yeah. I mean, like the, the Fairlight really kind of can the sounds in a really kind yeah, of it does. interesting it does, musical yeah. way, right? Yeah, well, that's what I liked about it, though. But yeah, the Fairlight, or the, the yeah, yeah, it's not. The problem is I can't shake that sting. Like a Dream of the Blue Turtles. Right, right. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> watching, watching him make that sequence, I'm like, I can't believe this dude's famous. Ding, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> ding. <laughs> That's almost almost ruined that sense for me forever. <laughs> awesome, man. But yeah, this, I think this would be pretty good for like scratch pad stuff. I'm definitely going after that next week. I think you'll be very happy with it. And if you have any like issues, if you want to make any changes, it's got a USB card cord in the back, so I can I oh, can okay. field update it. So uh, awesome. So if you want to say, if you say like, uh, can you make the, this go to 12k instead of 10k or whatever, I can I can switch that up for you. Okay. It's really not about just dropping the line. Thanks, Great Sarah. You, man. You too. Hey, I don't know you, and you don't know me, but uh, I feel I like you, I know you. I think, I think your name is Chris, right? Yeah. Thanks for. Who's there? Uh, who's put your name on Tommy's Twitter? Uh, otherwise, I wouldn't know who you are. Uh, so that was actually the first time I saw any sort of modular uh, synthesizer experience. Well, not experience, but like a demo. And it's actually for the first time that I thought, wait a second, it doesn't sound like something that I had to reach over to the golf and try and turn it down immediately. Well, it sounds musical, which I yeah, which like I, uh, you should go see her. What? You should go see her play if you want to hear some musical modular music. What's up, girl? So, awesome. Yeah, it can be music. Yeah, right. Just uh, most of the things that I've, saw, uh, I've seen on YouTube, they're just like yeah. something, something that's like yeah. jabbing my ear. Yeah, yeah. Well, maybe it, a, maybe you it, it lends itself to that. Like it's an experimental instrument. Uh, I'm old. I'm old. That's the only thing I can tell you is that, like, generally you'll find that people my age try to make normal music. <laughs> no, actually, actually, I mean, that really, be, am I right? I mean, it's, it's, it's fun and easy yeah. to do just crazy stuff. Yeah, but yeah, that's the path of to do what I just to do what I just did is is very difficult, bordering on impossible. <laughs> like, to just play songs is not something that you normally see because. And uh, and I have to know I have to know it really well, and because I designed all of that, I, it's not a problem. No. Oh God, yes. Um, trying to do that with the with the fucking Circuit Abbey or something. I actually. How do you feel with these tiny tiny knobs? I don't really ever change them. <laughs> I just like, like I have the, the it's tiny. I, mean, I have, I have, small fingers. I have the effect set set and I just change it, this reverb delay. I don't typically adjust that stuff much. Yeah, yeah, right there. And then I got the, I got the delay coming back here and the reverb is stereo.